great thing for me. Danny Clisham, take it away. All right, now, as we take you back in time in our living history presentation, as it continues on, the year is 1942. And if you live near a training base anywhere in the United States, from early in the morning till late at night, these are the sounds that you heard. Piston-powered, propeller-driven aircraft in the traffic pattern, training, training, training. First thing in the morning when you woke up, you turned on your radio. You let the tubes warm up. This might be what you'd hear. <laughs> that would allow the morale of the American citizen to once again reach a peak. Very quickly, men were recruited and flight training would start in earnest. Taking off from your left, the consolidated aircraft, four engine, twin tails, daylight bomber, the B-24. This aircraft, according to historians, the most produced warplane that America produced. Low to your left, probably the most recognizable bomber of World War II, the four-engine daylight bombing aircraft, the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress. In 1942, President Roosevelt announced that America would soon produce 50,000 combat planes a year. Few people believed it, and Reich Marshal Goring publicly scoffed at President Roosevelt's statement. However, in 1944, over 80,000 combat planes rolled off the assembly line and headed for German and Japanese targets, and production was still accelerated. Throughout the course of the war, President Roosevelt's unbelievable prediction had been exceeded by 50%. Within a year of Pearl Harbor, the United States was equally the combined Axis war production had become the leading shipbuilding of the world. By 1945, the United States and Britain, despite losses, had more merchant shipping than had existed in the entire world in 1939. By the end of the war, the U.S. had produced, let me take this back, by the end of the war, American citizens, human beings, had produced 300,000 planes. They had highly trained 186,000 flight crew members. They had built 87,000 tanks, 2.5 million trucks, 17.5 million rifles, 315,000 pieces of field artillery, and 4.2 million tons of construction supplies. The Axis was engulfed in a sea of American war production. Hitler and the Japanese warlords had fatally underestimated the capability of the American citizen operating under the free enterprise capitalistic form of government. American industry had overcome the 10 year premeditated lead of the aggressor nation to achieve total victory in over three and a half years. on the oil fields of Plessy, the awesome B-24. Ten crew members aboard, taking off from bases outside of London, England, and around the United Kingdom, vulnerable to enemy fire. It wasn't unusual for a hundred bombers to leave on a mission on their daylight runs, and only 60 or 70 to return. Each time we lost a bomber, we lost 10 young men on board as well. Now, let me go back. We had trained the soldiers. All the able-bodied men were over there fighting the enemy. They were crew members. They were infantry men. What was left here to build the machinery, to build the war power for our guys were the women. The factories were manned well over 90% by women. Few men who were infirmed and too old and too young also worked there. But the women quite often worked double shifts without a rest. 
They were known as Rosie the Riveters. It is said to be a time when the country was more together than it ever has been in anybody's memory because everybody was working together. The B-17 with the bomb bay doors open. A low level run deep into the heart of Germany, vulnerable to the German fight. As the F-6F of World War II fame and the Bent Lincoln Corsair of the Navy and Marine Corps fighter pilots and its leading scoring ace, Drake Happy Boy. The upper JU-52 three engine transport aircraft prior to World War II during the Spanish Civil War was used as a bomber. But from the Polish blitzkrieg to the end of the war, this was a troop transport used by Germany. The Red Tail P-51, flown exclusively by the Tuskegee Airmen, the black heroes of World War II who were given the charge of protecting bombers on their daylight bombing raid and whose reputation is such that they never lost a bomber that they escorted. The Tuskegee Airmen, our black fighters were fighting two fronts. One was fascism, the other The other, it's very difficult to talk about, but it was racism. Okay, low and to the right, coming in once again. This was one of the most produced aircraft of World War II. According to historians, there were 19,288 of these four-engine bombers built. Not too far north of here, outside of Detroit, Michigan, Henry Bill Ford built one of those airplanes every hour of the day using his mass production techniques. Out of the Willow Run Airport outside of Detroit, he was able to accelerate the production of aircraft to where they were pumping out one bomber per hour. Now the fighters from the Pacific, the Hellcat, responsible for more aces during World War II than any other American airplane, 305 aces. The chance fought bent wing aircraft carrier airplane, the Corsair, setting a record of 405 pounds in 1940. As the bombing continues, high into your right, the lumbering B-17. 12,731 of these silver birds were built. There are only about 12 and only about half of those 12 are actively flying. P-51 and P-17 teaming up like they often did. Coming in from your right, the Junkers, Ju-52, known by the Germans as Tantishu and Ju, the big lumbering ant that encompasses you and, and keeps you warm and is always a form of security and protection. Red Tail P-51 that we see in the air started out its life on behalf of the British. Well, before America was in the war, they needed fighters. They wanted North American Aviation of Los Angeles to build Curtis B-40s under license. In North American, Dutch Gildenberger was the president. He said, no, I won't do that, but I've got an airplane that will be far superior to that. You'll like it much more than anything you have now. And they said, okay, Dutch. Do that, but with a stipulation, you give us that airplane in 120 days. No problem, such Dutch Kildenberger. And the airplane was, in fact, off the production line in an awesome 117 days. Because it lacked a proper engine, it was relegated to a ground attack roll. It wasn't until they removed the American-built Allison engine and put on the whole choice of the engine that the aircraft become an excellent dogfighter and bomber cover aircraft. Using drop tanks, it could cover the bombers deep into German territory. Some say the P-51, built to the tune of 15,985 units, was the best fighter of World War II. At your right, banking around the silver, B-7, B-17, 
This will be the wall of fire. Get your cameras ready. We are going for a Guinness record. This will be it. Look at the human beings out on the grass. Focus your camera at ground level. The fire should be to the left of Rich Gibson's crew and to the right of Rich Gibson's crew, but it will be at ground level. This is the hot run. The B-17 and the crew with the Norton bomb sight has the target in line. Over across the target, free of any enemy fighters from above or below, they have a clean target. Get ready to feel the heat. <laughs> oh, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. I told you we'd have heat, we'd have vibration. The chest cavity would shake, and pretty soon we're going to an overcast condition. Rich's incredible pyro, 3,000 feet. That should be a new record, a record <laughs> that, we, that we'll break yesterday and the day before's official record. That one's for the record books. As we continue to watch all of our World War II aircraft, I would like to thank the organizations called the Commemorative Air Force, the Yankee Air Force, the Warbirds of America, the Canadian Warplane Heritage, their men and women who volunteer their time to restore these aircraft. They would have the right to keep them in museums, but you know what they do? They say young people have to see how it was. The older people have to remember how it was. We're gonna fly these airplanes. In fact, the motto of the Commemorative Air Force is keep them flying. Without their volunteer work, with no government funds, and their fundraising efforts, these high-maintenance aircraft who are running out of spare parts, spare parts being built by hand by the cooperatives of the bombers and the fighters, people getting together and saying, okay, if we build one thing, will everybody buy one so that we can sell a hundred of them or so, get together and make it all feasible. Look low and to your left. As the bombers are coming in, this could be, this could be a base outside of